I just thought, as I sang it the other day, you know, I'd just put it on a little bit. I'm Stop sure it. 10 seconds is within allowed. But I, I should have done the hands as well, really, shouldn't I? You should have done, really. Uh, we should have been in boxes. Oh, yeah. Right, on Celebrity Squares. <laughs> so how are you today with your gorgeous new haircut? I'm good, thank you very yeah, much. Really? It was a bit of an early start with Jake going to work. <gasps> driving, oh, really? driving in the dark. What's that about? Winter is coming. I know, and the oil light's coming on the car, and I've checked the oil, and it's fine, so it means it needs an oil service. Rude. I know, but it's got its MOT on Wednesday, and I've only got to, I've got to pick him up from work later, tomorrow night, and then Tuesday. So I'm not going to be doing masses of miles. It's got plenty of oil in it. Okay. Uh, the garage has said it'll be fine till Wednesday. Just don't drive to, like, Land's End or John O'Groats. <laughs> Really what I wasn't planning on any well, of those things. I hope my husband isn't watching because yesterday um, I was meeting Elaine for a run and she said, oh, I'll come to you. I said, oh, no, don't come to me. I'll meet you at the park because I need to give the Land Rover a run. I haven't run the Land Rover for ages. Well, I couldn't even open the car. It wouldn't even unlock. It's that dead. Oh, dear. So anyway, I'm going to have to get a jump. So to speak. I was going to say, and the car. Yeah, and the car. Yeah. The car. Obviously. <laughs> have you got a beverage? Uh, yeah, I've got a coffee because I've got a bit of a headache coming on and I think mm. it's because I've missed a couple of cups of tea. So I've got a mm. coffee with a teaspoon of hot chocolate in it. Oh, so it's a bit more like a mochaccino. Mm. Yeah. But with a waggy okay. waggy tail caught the cocoa at me foot instead of the milky. Well, you know, she obviously is excited because it's Sunday afternoon. It could be that, could be that. Um, I'll show you, for those of you that were here the other evening, um, and I said I was going to frog my cardigan, this is what's left. Unbelievable. The frog pond, eh? Yeah. I've got... A, couple of, a little bit that I'm just swatching with at the moment. I'm going to sneeze, I think. Maybe. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, bless you. No, it's all the dust off the yarn. Uh, it's all the fibres off the yarn. No. Nightmare. Never mind. Um, it is a beautiful yarn, and it makes a wonderful fabric, and it's really nice to wear. Um, yeah. It occasionally has little bits of vegetable matter, well, lots of bits of vegetable matter in it, and the occasional bit of plastic, which I think is because the tweedy bits have blown acrylic. Uh, and I think they've had a production issue, and this was from Kemp's on special. So I've got 20 something balls of this colour, which is called Wild at Heart. Well, that's a decent amount, isn't it? Well, given that it took six to make a cardigan for a chunk like me, it does go a hell of a long no, way. No, no. Sorry, that was the wrong word. That wasn't chunk. Hunk. Hunk. Okay. So I thought you'd like to see it in the bowl. Gorgeous. It is beautiful stuff. I like that. Uh, that's one of the other colours I've got. You see the orange with oh, the blue right. and the yellow? Yeah. yeah. I've made a cardigan in that. That's Ilias cardigan. Yeah. And I have some of the grey. I only got one ball because I knew I'd only ever use it as a contrast colour. And I don't right. know if you can see it. Again, it's got the yellow and the blue. It has, yeah. Little you can see highlights in it. That would look lovely on me, that. I've got a burgundy colour, a darker version of this, okay. a colour called Bluff Blue, which is sort of a very greeny muted seasidey colour. Okay. I've got about fourteen of those. I've got a colour called stone, part of which I'd knitted to a cardigan and then decided I didn't like the fit. Right. Um so at some point I may rip out the cardigan. I will have to find it first. It's yeah. It's somewhere. 
um mm -hmm. that's in like the stone color again they've all got blue and yellow tweedy bits and sometimes they have orangey tweedy bits it just depends what mood they were in on the day on production i did have some of the dark green but jackie's got that blue socks that went right. uh, did i say the burgundy color there wasn't a brown and i've got another color called uh, excuse me dawn which is like a it's a very faded peachy color much lighter than this stripe on my top right um, it's meant to be like a dawn sky and it goes quite nicely with the stone and with that one and with the green as well with the wild at heart so i don't know if that means i need to do some color work or whatever so what what are you planning with the stuff that you've just ripped out you said just watching what what are you thinking um i just literally cast on right uh for a little mosaic pattern that i'd found in one of my books that i digitized and then put away in the loft okay so i do own the book book yeah but i just scanned it and created a pdf so that i have it on my machine instead of having to have every book out ever <laughs> yeah because it takes up a lot of room doesn't it yeah and in a small house it's not always the most practical thing isn't it you know yeah. you, you just you sort of think okay we've got we've got nita with us we've got Hi, helen. Nita. which oh, helen? Both helen oh both helens there we go hello What's everybody doing? Have you got a beverage? Um, and what afternoon. are you up to? We should all be enjoying ourselves on a Sunday afternoon. Oh, Helen Curzon's going to be doing some ironing. Oh! Or some other such exciting task. Because that's oh, what she's no. usually doing on a Sunday. No, 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 no. That's all wrong. Reading, knitting, crocheting, it's not... uh, watching a movie. It's not possible with small children, and they don't have a house, boy. Well, does any of us? Well, you used to. Well, I used to when I lived in Saudi, let's yeah. be honest. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But not anymore. No, I have house Labradors who have the exact opposite task, which is just to grub up and mess anything they come into contact with. I mean, I have been cleaning today. I've changed beds. Cleaned bathrooms. Oh, I've well, even, well. and you'll relate to this. You know when you hoover the floor, and yeah. there's still half a dog left on the floor. I've been on my knees with one of the dog's rubber toys, actually, <laughs> just like rubbing on the carpet, and the rubber gets the hairs up easy. How sad am I? That is kind of really sad. But, you know, that just means that I don't have to do anything else for the rest of the day now. I, I can mm. feel. No, I should oh, think not. So, yeah, I don't know if you can Virtual. see that. It's just the first row of a little mosaic pattern. I'll show you again when, when there's more to see. Yeah, because it's a bit small at the minute. It is. It's a bit teeny-weeny. Oh, Helen's watching the Tour de France. I am so jealous. Oh, Helen, the, the other Helen's mask making. Wow. Helen says she's so impressed that I know how exciting her life is. <laughs> well, oh, you know. Nita. She says, says I'm on Sleeve Island of my campsite pullover. You can do this. They're, they're such easy sleeves and they're yeah. so quickly done and you'll love it once it's finished. We don't have hashtag sleeve gate in this group anymore. Well, that's not strictly true. I'm, I'm looking at two cardigans over the other side of the room that I found today when I was looking for something else that needs sleeves, but we digress. <laughs> I'm looking at you very disprovingly at the moment. Oh, well, never mind. <laughs> yeah, face bothered that one, Nick Lorraine. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah, too right. Computer says what? Computer says don't care. <laughs> no, no, computer does not care. No, that's funny. <laughs> oh, well, I'm just starting the ribbing. Right. 
first row of ribbing at the bottom of my Marion. Whoop whoop. Are you pleased with it? Um, yeah, I think so. We'll see how it turns out. Although, I say I'm on my first row, I'm actually going back and taking it out because I planned to do twisted knits and I forgot. So I'm going to go back and do them. Right. I like a twisted knit. So that's what we're doing. We're going back. So tink, tink, tink. Yeah, it'll be lovely. Yeah, looking forward to it. Oh, so yeah, it's been it's been a busy weekend for me, catching up on housework and stuff, boring things. Uh, I tell you what, I did actually finish The Witcher. Did you? Finally finished it. It's quite different from the book. Is it? Well, yeah, I mean, like it's a different as in different order, and um, I love. I love Dandelion, but he's not as flamboyant as in the book. Right. Okay. He's a lot more flamboyant, and he's really famous in the book as well. He's like the most famous minstrel bear, bard or whatever you want to call him. He's like, you know, everywhere he goes, everyone knows of him, has heard of him. Right. So he's not quite so well known in the TV series, is he? No. Um, and oh, the bit at the the bit at the end where the witches and that the they're having that fight. Mhm. Mm that is like a kind of a side in the book. So the main the main crux of that story is where he's fighting the vampire and he gets bitten, and the guy saves him, doesn't he? And he takes him back to his wife. Right. Yeah, you remember the bit. Yeah, but it's not a vampire. Oh, uh, well, you know, that sort of thing. There is a vampire in one of the other stories, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. So, anyway, he gets bitten, doesn't he? And the guy saves him and he goes back and all the rest of it. Um, that is, that is like a big, big, big thing. That mm -hmm. takes up pages and pages and pages. And the whole battle is kind of inside because he wants to know what happened to Yennefer. Right. So he goes to the site of where the battle was and there's like a stone in commemoration of the ones that fell with their names on and he goes to have a look to read the names to see if their name is on there. Oh. Yeah. But you don't actually see, or well, he, he doesn't really describe the battle in as much detail as is in the story in the series. Okay. So, yeah quite good though i did enjoy it look forward to series two yeah I'm, I'm quite eager to see how it pans out and i've been watching that documentary on the bbc iPlayer about lance armstrong today all right that's quite interesting i haven't watched any of that i don't know if helen would be interested in that considering she's watching the tour so uh, yeah what have you been watching then I, what did I watch yesterday? Uh, Luke Cage on Netflix. All right. That's a Marvel that. thing. Yeah. I've not seen that. Bulletproof, bulletproof bloke, more or less. Okay. Quite cool. Yeah, it, it was all right. It was a good story, good plot line, some good, you know, really well played baddies in it. Right. And some good plot twists. Some of it was a bit, yeah, you kind of knew that was coming. But it's like that with a lot of things, isn't it? There's only so many kind of character arcs that people can have. And at some point, you've got to figure out what they are. Wasn't it Shakespeare who said there are basically only like 14 stories or something? Yeah, and he's written them all or stolen them all if you watch <laughs> Upstart Crow. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, depending on your stance. Yes. Mm. Popular is it? Do you know, you think I'd be able to do a simple nine stitch repeat of 27 stitches, but apparently not. It's really difficult because, you know, maths and all that lot. Apparently beyond my brain, I don't know whether I need to switch to straight needles. I'm just <laughs> my head arrest. Is it putting you off? 
Um, this it's this flappy cable. Yeah. Kind of does my head in. That doesn't help. Um, I can't remember the last time I knitted on straight needles. I think it's because the chart I'm looking at is the opposite way around to my colours. Uh, so that's that's not helping. I might have to reach out it in Stitch Mastery um, to be able to actually get anywhere with it because I, I feel like I'm battling my own natural in inclination to follow the chart. It's it's like seeing the word red written in green ink, isn't it? Yeah. It's just too much. Yeah, it's beyond me. And me. It's Sunday afternoon. You're not expected. And especially after being up as early as you were. Yeah, quarter past five. It's just inhumane on a Sunday. I had a lion. Oh, yeah. Although I say that, I was up at quarter past five. Caitlin came in the bathroom mm -hmm. and she was faffing around in my ensuite. I don't even know what she was doing. She was in there forever with the light on. And I, in the end, I shouted to her, you all right in there? What's she doing? A flipping COVID test at five o'clock in the morning. Kids. What was wrong with the other bathroom? Well, exactly. No, no idea. And then she had to describe in great detail how she tried to get her tonsils and stuff. I should explain, by the way, that she doesn't even have symptoms. She's not ill. She's not poorly. She she just got randomly selected to take a test. Yeah. yeah. Well, so did I. Did you did you have fun? I haven't done my test yet because you have to book the courier first and I'm gonna be busy tomorrow and busy Tuesday. Oh wow. Well. And then I'll be with the car for the MRT on Wednesday. So I'll I'll phone up on Thursday and then whatever day they say. Caitlin did it online. You can book online. Oh well. Which daddy will do. Is. I'm sure it'll all be fine. It'll be fine. She got it on Saturday and she just booked straight away and then it came today, came and got picked up today. Which is why she was doing it at five o'clock this morning. As you do, you know. It's a bit keen, isn't it? Wow, you know, these teenagers. Five in the morning. I know. Well, she, well, she just went to bed. Yeah, because then you have to fill in a questionnaire about the test. So she went and did that. Then she got dressed. And then she walked the dog. Wow. Yeah. And then she went to bed. I don't know. Seriously, so I wonder about the sanity at times. It's no to be young again, eh? And not worry about all those dark circles on your eyes. Wow, well, baby, yeah. laugh that Jake got up. Said he would sort out his sandwiches last night, but again got up this morning and rushed around like a buffoon and dipped them this morning. And I'm thinking, how much easier would that have been if you'd just done them last night? And then you could just grab them. And I know he's got college tomorrow, so there's no buses to make up tomorrow because there's a canteen at college and they need to three big supermarkets, so there's no problem about yeah. getting anything they need while he's there. Um, but he needs to bear it in mind for Tuesday because I, I may or may not get to the shops tomorrow. I don't know what time I'll be back from Warrington. Oh, exactly. And you don't want to be worrying about it. Well, no. And I did tell him when I got the bread and stuff that don't eat all the buns because they're for work. So he's yeah. eating them all. So he's having bagels. Because I won't go to the shop and get more buns. Well, no, if you've told him, that's fair enough, isn't it? Well, yeah, I think I've communicated it effectively. <laughs> well, yeah, but Lorraine, your idea of receptive and a teenager's idea of receptive are two different things, aren't they, really? Yeah, I guess. Um, okay, well, that's that row done again. Can we see? Does it look any different? No, it's just the row that I've done and I've now ripped out. Oh. <sighs> I'm twisting my rib. Are you? Twisting my melon, man. You really love your twisted rib, though, I don't really you? I love my twisted rib. It's just, yeah, it's really not my thing. No? Is anybody else not a fan of twisted rib? To me, Helen. it's just something else I've got to do. Helen likes it. Helen loves really complex cables and 
Yeah. I do love a complex cable. Absolutely love them, and I do enjoy making them. But I, since I've gone back to work and everything, I've just become a more lazy person over the last year. I like to come in and sit down in front of the telly and just have some mindless knitting. Well, I don't blame you for that. Yeah. Well, just, you know, different projects for different periods of your life. I mean, during the gals, I like to have a challenge and do something completely different. Oh, that's good then. Yeah. But then everything's different during the gal, isn't it? Even time. Yes. Just, yeah, everything's yeah. different. Uh, so Helen Curzon loves Twisted Rib. See? It's just you, Lorraine. So, yeah, just me. That's fine. <laughs> you don't want to be in our gang, our gang, our gang. No, you know that meme of Marticia Adams going, yeah, I really don't want to be in your gang. That that would be me. That's you, yeah. You don't care, do you? It's fine. No, it's not my head. Hmm. Life would be boring if we all just wanted to be part of the same gang, wouldn't it? I think it would. Yeah. So we know what Nita's working on, and we know that Helen's making masks. You're swatching. Unsuccessfully. You're just really struggling, aren't you? You can't, you can't count and talk at the same time this afternoon, which is unlike you. Uh, I don't think I can count and talk. You normally can. I've completely lost the Honestly, part of this. I should have seven and I've got six. And <laughs> You really are but, struggling this but, afternoon. What's going on with it? What is going on with it? I feel like just kind of doing that with it. I think so. Why don't you show us your colours instead? Well, I could do. Uh, I was showing Emma earlier the, um, the colour kit that I bought, which you think it'd be relatively simple and not much to it when you talk about four seasons and, and colours. Um, but actually there's probably more to it than you think. Oh yeah. So that in its simplest forms, you have your four seasons. These are the Collie's ones. So Helen's on blanket. Oh good. Checked with this morning on to the next mini block. Oh, well done. Sounds like oh, making well, well, then. Fantastic. Brilliant. So, spring. Yeah. Summer. Yeah. Autumn. Winter. Okay. And these are just pure seasons. Right. So, if you'd gone to Colour Me Beautiful or, or somebody like that 12 years ago, 20 years ago, or whatever, that you'd have been checked with colours, not with wands, with swatches, and you'd have been draped at great speed because the, their okay. appointments are only a set amount. Of time. Yeah, I mean, they literally, I think the woman I went to see spent about 40 minutes on me, and most of that was talking to me about style, which was pointless because I live in jeans, for good right. sake. Yeah. Um, it yeah, but that was obviously what she was interested in. So if we with the wand approach, you put the wand sort of close to, and what you're looking for is whether it reflects under the chin, what you can see, does it make the eyes look baggy or make the eye colour pop or things like that, does it refine the jaw, does it make the jawline look like extra grey or things like that. Now, when we get to the drapes and stuff, and you get to these kind of greens, mm -hmm. They reflect on my skin and I end up looking like Spock. I really struggle with spring greens that are sort of in that emeraldy kind of colour or anything like that. Yeah. Really, really but I don't think the yellow is too you either, really. No, it's not my kind of yellow. It, all mm. of this is a bit bright. It's warm and I can almost get away with it. This top is a spring top. Okay. And I can get away with it because there's a bit of navy to tamp it down. There's a creamy white. 
it's far enough away from my face and I've got a better colour in my cardigan close to my face so it, it kind of makes up for it but when I put that next to my face you see that it's like when you put see me under yeah yeah it's exactly the same kind of principle so then we go to the summer colours um and what I tend to find is you won't see with this camera but is that instantly my chin and the skin around my top lip and my nose start to look grey mm -hmm. and every black head on my face <laughs> you have got a blue tinge and my lips go blue or yeah. if i sat in summer colors for more than about five minutes i would look like i was having a heart attack my lips go blue and my eyes look muddy and you can't tell me if you were going to the doctors and you wanted to be seen quickly well, yeah. But well, if you've got a day off work, sneaky, you go in looking like death warmed up, they'll send you home. It's fine. Colours. So that's the autumn palette, which sort of blends almost into my cardigan straight away. Yeah. Um, I'm not a true autumn, but I could, I could probably wear every one of those colours reasonably successfully. That brown definitely looks nice on you. I've seen you wearing a brown. Before. Yeah. Your humour. Yeah, yeah, the same brown. Um, and then the winter colours, just completely overwhelming. This is why I don't wear black. Okay. I do have some pairs of black trousers that were really yeah, expensive. Cool. So I'll wear them till they fall to bits, but with the right colours on top. But well, yeah, I will well, not I'm wear not black trousers. next to my face. Um, and and the the yellow, the icy yellow. It's just yeah. Oh no. Take it away. And the blues, I can feel it draining the life out of me. It's just no. really not pleasant. No, like so that's generally where we start getting yeah. a feel for whether somebody is cool or warm. And then we refine it with more ones. Oh. Like Harry Potter. Yeah, so again with the spring, so this is warm spring. Oh no, it's bright spring, sorry. So this is sort of the really brightest end, and again, I just feel it's wearing me. I feel a bit overwhelmed by it. Probably some of the lighter colours in the spring palette I can get away with because they're warm and so am I, but they're all a bit, a bit much. Yeah. That one's not too bad. That's the warm spring. Yeah, see, I like those better. Yeah, they're kind of closer. And then this is light spring. I would probably wear more of the light spring than the warm spring. Uh, that blue is quite bright still. It is very bright. I, I would wear that pink's very sim not yeah. quite but similar to my cardigan and I would probably wear that and I do wear camel. That I like kind camel. Of camel. I've got a camel jumper that I love to wear. So spring's no good for me and then we've got the, the three summers. We've got cool summer. Mm, pastels. Yeah, it's not not a fan of pastels. Light summer. Some of those I like. I like the paler end. Yeah, I can, I can feel the energy just sort of drifting out. Oh. Being close to them really <laughs> makes me uncomfortable. Mm. I can just about get away with the burgundy, but that's kind of a crossover colour between so, this is uh, you know soft muted summer. Uh, Jennifer Aniston soft muted summer she's actually a bright spring but because of all the multi-tonal highlights in her hair it's made her soft muted so. out of all the ones you've held up not one of them's gone oh i'm gorgeous not yet oh all right then but we're not finished yet that's good that's good the winter ones are just terrific um oh, come so on. this is deep autumn I'm, hmm. I'm not deep, but I, th I, feel, I feel more in harmony with those. There's a, there's a few on there that I like. 
Yeah. I like that middly blue colour. Blue yeah, blue that, is, that one's nice. It's called marine blue. It's it's verging yeah. on a teal, and I wear that a lot. Yeah, it's a nice one. And the ones either side of it are nice as well. Yeah, and I I do have tops in this sort of mustardy colour, and I do have a hoodie in this lighter mm. yellow that I like to wear um, occasionally, and I wear a lot of the reds. Yeah, the softer reds. Uh, what one are you? Well, you are at winter. Where are you coming from? Uh, so warm autumn. I wear a lot of the khaki. I'm gonna say those are nicer. A lot of this peachy colour. Yeah. I can get away with the grey, but it's not my best. I wear the brown, the white. Even I'm not a fan. Sorry. Not a fan at all. Mm. I do wear the green, but not very often. I wear the purples and the peachy colours and the, the mustardy yellow and tomato red I would wear a lot. Cool. And then the last one is the soft muted autumn, or it should be, which is sort of the range of where I am. Well, those are much nicer. I really like that blue. It's a beautiful teal and I wear a lot of the purple that that's like the drops uh bell dark yeah. purple it's almost identical and the teal is very similar i wear a lot of the burgundies and browns pretty much everything on here i, I would wear yeah. on a regular basis i do wear some of the pinks but they're never shown in these the lady that made the ones obviously didn't think about pinks for autumns and it's very remiss because yeah. we do have our pinks and we do sometimes like them um now cool winter Ooh, yeah <laughs> yeah it's it's not me um me and black and oh. that purple's just too much isn't it really it is um the navy i could probably get away with but that yellow and the black and oh yeah just yeah mm. Seconds. Um, what's that one? Deep winter. In it's the quite intense. Winter. Very intense colours and yeah. But again, they wear me and just no. Just no. Uh, and that one should be the bright winter. So. Mm. Uh, the sort of deep purples, the burgundies. This is a very intense red. I would, I, I like the blues. Um, I yeah. personally would wear like, I like white. I wear white, but you know, yeah, it doesn't do me any favors. All you see there is me, <laughs> sort of fading into the background because this thing is going. Whoa! Hello! And I, I can't <laughs> compete with it, and that. Yeah. So yeah, once we've gone through that to get the level of colour, the depth of colour, the intensity. Yeah. Um. Then we go really quickly through the drapes and stuff. Mm. And I've got the drapes out if anybody's interested in seeing some of those. Is it a bit like doing the dance of the seven veils when you're getting draped? Um. You actually should take your time. You should really allow a couple of hours with your consultant. Um, not least so they can get an idea of who you are and what you're looking for. Because um, just turning up and saying, oh, can you do my colours? Well, how does that help you? How are you going to use them? And what colours do you actually like? And what are you going to use? If you wore green as a school uniform, you know, bottle green, and that's now in your palette from your analysis, you're going to be anti it because it reminds you of school, particularly if you hated school. <laughs> My school jumper was a bright royal blue mm. v-neck and it looked horrendous on me and I used it's to, even in, the, yeah, even in the deepest, darkest middle of winter, I would refuse to wear my jumper and just be in my white shirt saying, I'm not cold, I'm fine, I don't need my jumper on because it just looked awful on me. Mm. Looked better in the white shirt. <laughs> Thing is, kids usually instinctively know. Yeah. 
uh, what works for them. They just have a knack. Yeah. You know, they they tend to be really good at it. I hate the like purple. Um. Well, I love purple, but and it it is a, it's kind of a universal colour, and I say that. I say that with a caveat in the yeah. finding the depth of colour that suits you. If you are choosing colours for bridesmaids or people like that, go with um that sort of blush pink that was in season last year. Um or go with a purple or go with um sort of a, a taupe or or an ivory or something like that and let them choose their own necklaces and jewellery. Don't make them have matching necklaces and jewellery. Uh, so that they can then choose something that's better next to their own skin. Don't insist that they've all got to wear silver just because you do. Because uh, anyone who's a spring or an autumn is going to look awful in the silver and that next to the face. It doesn't matter how good the dress is. I can't wear any jewellery. It's going to be really awkward. Is that if you allergic to nickel? I'm allergic to everything. Phil even bought me for one of our wedding anniversaries proper decent gold and real diamond stud earrings and I can't even wear those. Can you not put nail polish on them? Uh, no. I tried some of those and um, someone sent me some hooky things that, that the stuff that's supposed to be for anyone that's allergic to anything ever and you're supposed to be able to wear those. Put them in and literally within 10 seconds my ear started to swell up and burn. Mm -hmm. I'm just weird, you know me. I'm allergic to air. Well, you know, um, it's just awkward. I'm sure lots of people are allergic to lots of things, but they don't know. I saw somebody that I know that uh, has a YouTube channel was waffling on this morning about um, oh. how she's waiting to see the ear, nose, and throat doctor because she's got a bump inside her nose and she says oh, she really? can't breathe and. And this is happening and that's happening. But she's already had surgery twice. And I'm thinking, yeah, go away and stop drinking milk and get tested for allergies. Because yeah. that's why you can't breathe. We've all got the bump in the nose. And the only thing that stops it is removing dairy entirely. Do you know what? I've never felt so much better since I got rid of dairy. Mm. Oh, Nita, uh, I get the most compliments from people when I wear the bright winter colours. I need to stay away from most yellows. Yeah, mm. um, for winters, yellow can be really difficult. Uh, if you're a bright winter, you could probably get away of, you know, the Freddie Mercury bright yellow jacket? You're one of the few people that could carry that off, but not for long. <laughs> it's... I've always it's thought it's, yellow. It's too intense for most people, but yellow for winters is usually sort of pale and icy. Do you not think that more people can't wear yellow than any other colour, though? Um, that's a difficult one. I just think that quite a lot of people can't carry yellow off. I don't know. Um, I don't know that that's like necessarily mustard. the case. It's the right yellow. As we go right for the right person, it's the right yellow for the right person. Would it help if I showed you the different yeah. packs of drapes? Because that I, I was, I, was, I usually stack them in a rainbow colour order, and you can get a better idea when you see them. I yeah. like mustard. It's the only yellow I can wear. Right. Okay. Let me try I to be organised. And you, right. Would anybody like to guess how much this little lot cost? Too much. <laughs> um, about fifteen hundred pounds and wow. about two and a half grams on training. Wow! Yeah. And we're getting it for free right here, ladies. Well, te you're getting some advice, aren't you? A steer in the right direction. So these should be summer and winter. So I went for. The package with as much stuff in as possible because I like the flexibility. And some people Ooh. cannot sit for a long time. Right. So this is a summer cape and it's 
once you've established that someone's cool, you would yeah. then check them against summer and winter. Um, I'm guessing that I look absolutely awful in this. I feel ghastly. <laughs> I had to be a bridesmaid for my friend Sharon, who I love dearly, but she picked this pale yellow. Oh. And then I was the bridesmaid for my brother's first wife, and she picked yellow. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Do not do brides not do this on purpose. I do not know. I, I don't know what the crap beautiful. is. So yeah, bright winters have got a lot of flexibility, Nita, with their colours. Um, wear it more when her hair was dark, but since it's turned silver white, yellow casts a glow that she doesn't like. Yeah, it it would it would cast a glow on the hair. Um. In the trade and, and in the quiet, we call it urine yellow. Oh, yeah, because it gives a really awful cast to the hair. So, yeah, keep, keep away from the yellows for now. You may not be as bright as you were, um, but you will still be able to go with quite intense colours. Um, this is the winter one, and you'll see it's got the very bright silver. I was going to say that silver is party season, isn't it? Yeah, and the blues I was working with the other week, that's one of the blues. Yeah, that's not your blue. Oh, Helen says they do it on purpose to make you look crap so they don't get upstaged. Yeah, and right. I understand that. Uh, I just feel overwhelmed in this to the point. I never had any bride's maid. But I bet Nita will be able to wear a lot of these colours. And do you look better with silver jewellery rather than gold? Hmm. I don't think I've ever thought about my jewellery like that. Um, for years I wore silver. Yeah. I can get away with antique looking silver, but I am better off in gold and the duller the better, the more muted the better. Uh, Helen, my bridesmaids had a champagne colour, the little ones, and a lovely pale vintage rose, which looked great on the other ones. Well, that would be nice and subtle, wouldn't it? So this is more my palette, and you'll see that we've got... Oh, you've got gold. A, a, it's a bronzy colour, really, an antique gold or bronze, verging on the copper almost. Oh, I can't sing gold We've now. got my yellow, my purples and blues and teals. Um, my blue. And the greens more intense sorry i've got a bag sat on my cable um and the tomatoey red and, and the lovely chocolatey brown so like i'll be i'll be quite happy in that even though it is a bit like wearing a circus tent it's like you could make a really cool skirt out of those it could <laughs> uh, and these are the spring ones so, and you can see instantly how much oh, brighter definitely. they are. I'll be very interested to see how Nita looks in bright spring versus bright winter. Because oh. very often, if you're just bright, you can mm. get away with some of the crossovers. And the, the gold is very intense and bright here. And it's almost sparkly. And Yeah, it's beautiful. But it wears me. I like those two blues. Well, you just like blues. I know. If I was left to my own devices, I'd wear blues, browns, white, and black, and nothing else. Emma's what we call a blue summer. <laughs> Is that because I'm depressed? Okay, yeah. <laughs> no. With the blue, blue summer. So, one of the most important drapes once we get to Oh, it. wow. So this is a summer antique silver. That's nice. And if I, just... I don't think I could wear it outside of the Christmas season, though. Um, well, it's supposed to give you a steer on jewellery as well. But there are, I do know women who would wear these. And then there's the antique gold. Once we've discovered that somebody is sort of soft and muted, then we check between the gold and the silver. I can get away with that, but I'll look better with that. You can even see that just from there. Yeah. So I'll put that back in its own pack, because otherwise they go wandering, don't they? 
Yeah. Yeah. Some of colours out for Emma. Ooh. So so all in a big pack. Oh, yellow. Oh. Rose beige. Ooh, interesting. Yeah, I quite like this almond cream. I like that. Purple. Wouldn't wear that. Purple. I wouldn't wear that. Plum. I wouldn't. Oh, no, it's no. Yeah, all of these are a bit pecky now. You. This is your red. Really? More pinks. Oh, no. More pinks. No. This is a, a summer and autumn crossover. Right. That's definitely a rosy summer. Orchid for summer, that would be more a cool summer. Move. Raspberry. Because they're getting <laughs> heavy now. Deep rose. I, honestly, the pinks and carnation colours for summers. Their red's called watermelon. Mm. And they've got a burgundy. I've got a top in that colour, that burgundy colour. So, I mean, do, when people think summer and they, they think beachy colours and blues and, and cools and, and soft, this is one of the biggest packs that I've got for summer. I, I think there's I've only... I've got so many colour choices. I'm going to start to look like fog any like second that. now. See, now this is looking better. It's probably looking better in terms of your preferences, but I'm starting to feel sick. <laughs> I like those. Uh, my dad's probably left the room now because that's Man City blue. All right, yeah. That's just not allowed. Grey. It's making me I feel like grey. I like blue greys. Oh, silver does tend to look better, or rose gold, as I've got a rosy gold, a rosy tint to my skin. Tried to wear top nail polish and it looked muddy. So yeah, pearly pink. Yeah, you are definitely cool rather than warm. So yeah, sounds like a bright winter. Oh, look at all those. See, no, these are much better. Look at that. Yeah. Chinese blue. Grey blue. Charcoal grey blue. Yeah. Summer navy. Muted navy. And your browns. Oh, I love oh. Them. Again, a really good selection of browns. There's plenty in there, isn't there? Uh, yeah. Rose brown. Oh, that's two of the rose brown, that's why. This is kind of like a dusky grey blue that I'm wearing here. Yeah. Definitely blue. Those pinks just now. Nah. Yeah, it's um, definitely horses for courses, isn't it? So I'll put those <laughs> back on there and sort them back into a rainbow later. How unsurprised were you that I didn't like the pinks? Um, yeah, and yeah, I love that pink, and it's very, very close to my Vera sweater. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. And it is a summer and autumn crossover, and it's verging on the universal, so that's a good bridesmaid colour. Um, that's another summer and autumn crossover, so universal kind of dusty purple. Yeah. And that's an autumn one, so I'll put those with the autumn ones later. Right, so we have a giggle at the spring. Come on in. <laughs> it's Kylie's hot pants. Yeah, it's, she borrowed them off me and then stretched them. I mean, not... how rude is that? What she a fatty. Should... She should have just kept them and replaced them. That's what she should have done. She should have done. Absolutely. Rude. So, yeah, I think we can agree that the gold wears me. <laughs> it's so not that, your finest moment wearing that. No. The tests. 
the fun bit now will be the blues and the greens in this palette um because they yeah i'm just gonna be spock central uh, do this in front of the window you can see the green reflecting onto my face onto my skin I love those greens. I wouldn't wear them myself, but I do really like them. Um, the yellow's not so bad. The peachy colours aren't so bad. I would probably get away with some of these. That peachy one, I think you could probably get away with. The darker one's better. And even oh, the bright yeah. coral, I can all nice. But they're purples. They're really quite strong. And again, I think they're wearing me. Yeah. This yeah. is a winter spring crossover. Are you ready for the yellow? Oh, oh go on. Beautiful. Yeah. Oh, blue and yellow. More blue. I like that blue. More blue. Oh. Like a limey green colour. Yeah. It, what's it called? Pastel yellow green. This is light yellow spring green. Bright true green. Oh no. This is their teal, which is oh, called I like that. light teal. It's too strong for me. Instantly I'm just cringy. Yeah. I want to take it off. The warm beige I probably would wear. I will certainly wear, this is the warm grey. Oh, I like that. I would wear most of the spring browns, even though they're probably a bit too much. I would probably wear them in colour work or trousers. Those are lovely. Uh, ivory white. Yeah, there's lots and lots of colours for spring. <laughs> Peach, gotta love my yellows. But honestly, there's tons. <laughs> Pastel pink, Ooh, no. pure peach. Oh, that's pink. Coral. I would wear that. I wouldn't. And I do wear this new coral because that's more or less the colour of my. Um, Bamboo top. Oh, yeah. Helen Quakes likes the first um, spring yellow that we looked at. Uh, clear, bright pink. I must have duplicates here. When you send off for these sets, you don't necessarily always get what you're supposed to get in the set. Mm. So you, then you have to order the ones that you've got missing. And they're beggars for substituting. So, yeah, I would probably get away with the warmer colours, but. Again, they're all a touch bright. Yeah. Beautiful, but bright. I'm not a fan of bright. I'll have to do some sorting later. I just these greens. Oh yeah. <laughs> that is perfect. <laughs> Reflecting under my chin, yeah. Oh. It's really great. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> yeah. Live long and prosper, everybody. Nice. <laughs> Yeah, it's not me. Should we do winter next and just see how dead I look? <laughs> oh, oh, All right. Okay, so remember that lovely antique silver we had? Oh, yeah, this is more cosmic silver. Yeah, this is. Um... Oh, wow. Yeah. That gives you a blue tinge to your skin as well. Well, yeah, and look at the reflection. <laughs> it's, it's not good, is it? You never know. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll get that off. Yeah, put that somewhere. Blah. Okay, now for the horror show. Um, yeah, winter white. Oh, yeah. That one's all right. I like that one. That was not too bad. I'd wear both those. It's a spring crossover. Icy yeah. yellow. 
Oh no. Icy grey. Mm. Light true grey. Honestly, I want to scratch these off my chest. <laughs> Icy blue. Oh no. Icy violet. Oh. Icy pink. See, Nita could absolutely rock these. Icy aqua. Oh my god. Icy green. Now, winter oh. pinks, shocking pink, oh, hot pink. We're calling that magenta, isn't it for that me? Is not magenta. Fuchsia. Wow. New fuchsia. This is old fuchsia. Blue red, true red, another blue red, dark true red, bright burgundy. New burgundy. Are you ready for the yellows? Oh, come on. Oh. I, just, I want to throw up. Oh, it's back cup yellow. It's really intense. This is like Freddy's jacket. I don't mind the greens. Wouldn't wear them. But, you know, a bit Christmassy. Yeah, I mean, I, I decorate with them. I wouldn't wear them. Yeah. Pine green, new pine green. That's a car colour, isn't it? Yeah. Dark taupe. Hmm. Helen said that silver is Star Trek alien costume silver. Yes. And it feels like it. It's really not pleasant. Grey. Grey. Do you see what I mean about why I don't wear grey either? Yeah. Oh, hot Ooh, right. Chinese blue, true blue, royal blue, bright navy. We'll get to the purples now. Ooh. Winter purple. This is royal purple. Navy blue. Mm. Yeah, it's not good, is it? Mmm, yummy. Yeah. I want to throw all these out. <laughs> just to sleep in the grass. Oh, get them away from me. No, just energetically, and it sounds odd, but energetically, it just it sucks the life out of me. It's just really not nice. What do you want, dog? Oh, yeah. Those are really your colours. These are one of the few things that I actually have to iron. All right. To go back into the boxes and, and to look nice. So have we set you a task for this evening then? Um, Once they're folded again and yeah, and crushed, they'll be fine. So I get back to something that is harmonious now. Oh, there you go. Does that make you feel better? <laughs> it does. <laughs> It, and it's it's lighter as well. It's not as heavy. The other stuff's quite stiff and mm. scratchy, but no, I don't like that. This is probably at the deeper end of that's what nice. I wear. Yeah. And that's nice. Oh, look, you're almost wearing your top again. Yeah. <laughs> the bright red. That is so that's funny. About, it's about as bright a, a red as you'll get for an autumn. I've got loads of big. This silly machine, I'm still here. Yes, of course, I'm still here. Where would that be? Right, you ready for beige central? Come on, then. Camel, beige, beige, camel, new camel, <laughs> gold, gold beige. Are you ready for this one? Mustard beige, green sulfur. Really, it's actually more in common with that. I would attempt to wear that colour, I think. It might not look any good on me, but I would attempt it because I quite like that. It would be overwhelming. But, uh, what's that one? Pumpkin. Ooh, no. Yellow gold. Ooh. Sweatshirt, this colour. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't wear it very often because it's too small. Ooh. Lime green. I, I would wear that. Uh, this is my nice. turquoise. I like that. That one's nice. Um, mustard, my mustard. I like that one as well. 
Mm. Mahogany. Oh, that's an interesting colour. Aubergine. I like aubergine. Now this one is the, it's a winter and autumn crossover. So it's verging on the cool, but I would wear those together in for like a a monochrome kind of outfit. And I might yeah, like purple in, I love my purples. Marine navy. That one's nice. I've got a grey, but it's a warmer grey. Yeah. Coffee brown. Oh, that's nice. Medium bronze. These are the Armani colours. Oh, so right. Okay. Armani ready to wear suits. Yeah. Very often have these colours. Yeah. Which one? Yeah. We don't have a black. We've got a brown. It's a deep, deep brown. Mm. I seem to have got duplicates, so uh, hang on. Salmon. Orange. Helen Curzon's going to be going blah because she hates yeah. oranges. And right, orange isn't good. This is it, the, a deep autumn would wear this, I certainly couldn't. In the 90s, when I worked for the bank, I did have a tango orange suit, like a business suit in a tango orange. How ridiculous oh, is that? A few terracotta. <laughs> Uh, deep peach, I would wear that, but it's slightly on the warm side, even for me. Mm -hmm. uh, this one's called Bittersweet, it's one of our reds. Ooh. Tomato red. Rust red. Forest green. I had a car that colour. Yellow green. Lighter yellow green. Jade green. Now, Ooh. light moss. This is another Armani colour. Autumn Moss, it's an Armani colour. Dark Olive, Armani. I quite That's like that. I live in my olives and khakis. And then yeah, there's I a like light it. green grey, which is just tones quite nicely with all of those. Hmm. And then there's a darker green grey. And then I've got some teals. There's like a muted turquoise. Um, oh yeah, I like that one. Tealy beer, teal, dark teal, medium teal. And then we get to dark periwinkle. And then I've Ooh. got these purples and pinks. Which are my purples and pinks. Quite like that, um... Oh, Helen bought a coral top, but she's still not convinced. <laughs> you'll have to send me a photograph. I was going to say, we'll have to see you in it. Yeah, you'll have to share with the group. I'm sure she looks lovely in it. I bet she does. The other things that she's bought, every now and then she'll send me some photographs uh, on WhatsApp, and she looks lovely. So I, I can't see why she wouldn't. Those colours are nice. I like those. I love khakis, olives, any of those um, shades. I, I, I like. I don't, maybe it's a, a throwback to having grown up on army camps, my formative years. Well, I I like if if I was to wear a green or a yellow, it would have to be like a muddy version of a green or a muddy version of a yellow. Does that make sense? Yeah, because you're soft muted. I don't like bright. Like bright leaf green. Oh no! <laughs> well, no, it was too much for you because you're mm. you're not a bright light. Like, Nita can carry that intensity of colour. Somebody like Yvonne um, looks really good in those intense reds that the, and the cool reds. I couldn't wear it, and you couldn't wear it. I've never ever been drawn to red. Um, energetically, it's it's a funny colour. Mm. It works for some and it doesn't for others. Uh, the best advice I can give you is never have bright yellow in your bedroom or your kitchen because initially it will wake everybody up and you'll think, oh, isn't this cheery? Within a week, you'll be at one another's throats arguing and phoning divorce lawyers. We used to have a bright yellow kitchen when I was growing up. Yeah, and I bet everybody fought in it. In the 80s, oh well, it was always my mum was in there cooking and like she'd shout at you, so you didn't go in while she was cooking. Yeah, and then yeah. after dinner, it was me, my brother, and my sister would have to do the washing up and putting away, and we'd always argue. Yeah, it's the colours. 
it's yeah it's the bright yellow it's really not good and if you're gonna do your bedroom don't go if if you love red if somebody like Yvonne who loves red and suits red great but don't overdo it in your bedroom because it's too stimulating um. you'll end up you can't relax so you need to understand the energy um of the colors that you're playing around with so helen uh, gypsum says she doesn't like bright reds or purples no i'm the same helen no callum's got one red wall in his bedroom but it's like um like a, a dark red not a bright red i can't what, what how would you describe it um one of Jake's walls is um, a summery Chinese blue. Right. And my bedroom walls are these two. Oh, cool. Um, the plums are summer colour, but the purple is a crossover between summer and autumn. But they're quite restful, and that's why I went with those colours. My bedroom is still the magnolia it was when we moved in 16 years ago. Yeah, in, in our house, we always call that Mongolia because that's it's what Annie says. I always called it. I, I'm going to decorate. I'm just, just doing it Mongolia. Yeah, well, my bedroom is Mongolia. Yeah. And I've got... This is going to be like things. avocado, isn't it? You're all going to be wandering around the shops asking for avocados and Mongolia. Yeah, I want an avocado. I like an avocado. Not, not the actual... It's interesting about your browns, though, isn't it? I love browns. <laughs> my curtains, I did actually have to buy curtains for my bedroom. It's the only thing that I've chosen and put up in there. And they're like a deep red wine colour. Oh, okay, that would work. Uh, do you want to see the men's drapes, which are different again? Is there only one small set? Of I will say, go on then, go on then, why have you got them out? Yeah, there's only a handful of men's drapes i love that they get their own uh well these are to go with the other colors right um but they're more suiting fabrics oh uh, yeah that makes sense and i can't imagine anyone i know wearing shirt. that shirt but i can think of men Maybe i know that would wear that my dad would wear that one, but the flowery one maybe is a tie. Possibly. Um, they're all winter. Um, winter. Oh, that reminds me of an, a teacher that we had, and she used to wear that as a skirt. Yeah, this is too high contrast for me. That's making my eyes go funny. Yeah, it wouldn't work for me at all. Uh, autumn. But autumn, this is actually a faux suede. It's interesting the difference of fabrics that they choose for these. Uh, fine pinstripe. Mm. And then a subtle, slightly darker pinstripe. Mm. So again, these are based on personality and colour and preferences for types of patterns, which I always think is fascinating between the types. The summer ones are, are quite funny. Oh, that's another autumn. I like that. Very tweedy. I'd definitely wear that. Mm, I like that. I'd wear that as trousers. Uh, that's an, is that an autumn. Yeah. That's nice. That's uh, autumn olive, and that's another Armani one. And the men's summer burgundy, that's, presumably see, like shirts my, and ties. That's like my curtains. Oh, those are nice. Navy pinstripe. Yeah, I like a navy pinstripe. Like a Chinese blue. They call it nice. steel blue. Phil would look lovely in that. And again, this chats with blue fabric. Mm. And then they've got this baby blue cord. It's mm. super soft. 
I don't know many men that would pull that off. Uh, Helen Gibson said Paul's would all be blue, green, grey and black, as are most men of a certain age. Yeah, very cultural thing, isn't it? Uh, Helen Curzon, all looks a bit Del Boy. Yes, <laughs> that's the, the floral definitely does. Spring denim. So Del Boy used to wear, like, striped shirts. Like that one, that one's Del that's Boy. spring, yeah. Tan gold. Oh, yeah. Grey pinstripe, but it's a, a warm pebbly grey, it's not. And then there's a warm beige, kind of. Oh, yeah. I like, like that one. an ECT fabric. That for the summer. So, yeah, that's it's a ridiculous price, really, for the, the men's drapes, but it's worth having them. Um, men, interestingly, are very good customers because they've already made the decision about what they want, what they want to do, what they want to achieve in the day. Everything is mapped out as far as they're concerned before they even come to see you. Uh, mm. the, and the instant on oh the black and white check she says for Dell oh the hound too well I think you'd be more the leopard print yourself yeah you are the you leopard, leopard, print man. leopard print and stripes yeah yeah because he's got a few really lurid striped shirts hasn't he mm. I love Del Boy my ones he's so, just like my dad <laughs> and then the other sort of bit of colour that with graphic design um occasionally we invest these are about 175 pounds wow so pantone color block and it has all of the colors and more importantly for me it's got all of the hex codes uh... so for html for web development uh, and if somebody's got branding but doesn't know the codes we can sort of get the fan out and find the closest thing to it that will work for web um, so that's quite okay. interesting and it's a good tool as well because you can undo that with a little screwdriver and take it apart and then put colours together in blocks mm. to just make it easy for people to understand but once you know what your colours are um, one of the best and cheap tools that you can have is you know the um, the strips with the paint colours on at the DIY store <laughs> Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> They're really handy if you can find one that sort of harmonises with your swatches. So I hope that's been interesting. I don't know whether it that's has, but I sort of take those colours into account whenever I'm swatching for anything. Um, you know, with, with regards to who is it for, will it suit them, and will it go together? And sometimes you need more of a contrast and sometimes you don't. Um, and it, it, it's, it's always a good idea when you're doing colour work swatches to take a photograph, desaturate it with your phone, make it black and white, and then you can see where the colours are too close together to work. Mm -hmm. I, d I don't really tend to need to worry about that because most of the time I don't mix anybody else anyway. <laughs> and it's all blue and brown and teal anyway. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what, 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 I do not understand the problem. What is the problem? Come on. <laughs> so, and then I was I was in a bit of an organising mood earlier, um, so I was taking photographs of of piles of sock yarn. Can you see that? Oh yeah. Um, and there's the next one. Oh, those are mine. No, they're not. They're mine. They're not blue. It's just the filter on this phone. They're blue. No, they're not. There's a narrow in there, and you just know that that bag is going to shrink and have a dozen knots in it. That's yeah. <laughs> awful, am I? Uh, honest, not awful, honest. Well, yeah, and I, I try and put them into colour groups of where they're harmonious and where I think they're going to work well together, particularly sock yarns and stuff like that, where I could make drapey cardigans or cowls or something like that. Uh, oh, Michelle yeah. says it's fascinating, no idea what colours I am, just hope for the best. Um, well, the biggest indicator is when you dressed up for a night out and somebody says, oh, that's a beautiful dress, then usually it's the wrong colour. Exactly. But if they say, 
wow, you look fantastic in that dress, then you've probably got the colour dead on. That so it's, pull off it's a like compliment. Dress. It's easy to say, yes, that's a lovely dress. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Usually, but not for you. <laughs> oh, your hair looks really nice tonight. <laughs> oh, that thing that women do, I just, honestly, we all do it, of you look well, which is code for, my God, when did you get fat? <laughs> <laughs> you look really well. You look really well. <laughs> yeah, so I think we need to just be kinder to one another, really, and not worry about it. Well, yeah. Yeah. So okay. next time, um, Thursday. Thursday. What are we going to talk about on Thursday? Any suggestions? Any ideas? Uh, what have we talked about? Do we want to talk cables? We could talk cables. Yeah. I like a good cable. Or has anybody got something they're really desperate to try and would like to chat about in a bit more depth? See, I don't know. I, I'm just happy to go with the flow, mate. Eh? <laughs> you know? As long as you get all the blue yarn and the brown yeah. yarn, the green yarn. <laughs> yeah, you know me well, and I'll just rock up with my cup of tea yeah. and I'll be fine. Honestly, I'm covered in bits of this 3D yarn. <laughs> Glad it doesn't show up on camera. <laughs> Gorgeous. Oh. Oh, here's a cup of tea, I think. Yeah, time to wander up and get other things to do. Well, I've got to get my dinner and then I've got to pick up Jake at half past seven. Uh. Oh, Helen says she'll always talk cables. Well, oh, Thursday okay. night cables it is. Yeah, we'll do cables. I'll find some of my, my sews with cables, shall I? Yeah, yeah, that'd be good. I'm just looking in the corner that is a mess, thinking, what have I got in there? Uh, I've tried to put all of my samples into one of those giant vacuum bags, which was going really well up until I realised that even though it is gigantic, it's not big enough. <laughs> I've got loads of them under that bed there, full of all different things. And it's fine until you want something. And then you you can't see which one they're in. And you end up opening them all up and it was the last bag that you opened. Yeah, well, my intention with these, with this yarn, was to get one of every colour that I've got. So I could show you them. And you could see the range of colours. But I found two of them two or three of the colours in one box that was reasonably accessible. I had to move seven boxes to get to it, 84 litre boxes. And the other one would have inv involved me moving two chests of drawers <laughs> and another stack of the uh, 100 and something litre boxes to get to the wardrobe that they're in at the back that has no clothes in it. It's a wall of yarn with stacked boxes of yarn in front. Sounds like heaven. Uh, it is till you want, you know, the ball that's just in the back corner behind everything and it's always that one. It's always that one. Yeah. I was watching um, Dogwood Knits podcast this week and she's um, she was doing a, um, like a bit of a sale at D-Stash and... Uh, she said she was actually getting anxiety about the size of her stash. And I was like, oh, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't understand that. I don't understand that. No, no. I don't get that at all. Uh, it's, surely it's about preparedness. Well, yeah, I mean, if this year has showed us nothing, it showed us be prepared, has it? Well, I called at the wool shop the other day. I might, I might have got another ball of this gorse colour. Well, that is nice. Some colour work. Mine. I have a play around with the colour work. Um, and I was asking how they were doing because when I went in a few weeks ago to get the rest of the yarn for my campsite cardigan, she said it was awful. Hardly anybody was coming in, and she said we've had an amazing week, and I don't know why. And then I was been said, 
Well, everyone thinks we're going into another lockdown, don't they? So they're all buying it because mm -hmm. they know they're going to be sat at home potentially for another few weeks. Yeah. If they announce another lockdown. It's coming. And even if it's not nationwide, it's likely to be a local one. Well, Barrow is on the edge. Yeah, we're like that. But the thing with Barrow is that the shipyard is testing 5,000 people. Sure. Well, no, actually, the workforce is nearer about 8,500 now. It was about 5,000 when I worked there. Um, they're being tested every week. So I think it gives an artificially high reading, given the percentage of population that are being tested. Mm -hmm. And our hospital was one of the best examples mm -hmm. in terms of COVID testing for as many people as possible right from the start up until it was privatised and then it all went to rats. I've got a friend who's got two kids and yeah. one has got to go to Dumfries from Edmonton. Yeah. It's a good two hour drive on a good day to get tested and then the other one has got to go to Carlisle the day after. Well, I mean, Really, we shouldn't be going anywhere, should we? Well, no. No, That's we shouldn't. No point. That, that's the problem. If you want an antibody test, the nearest one is Preston or Manchester for us. Mm. Well, no, I've got to go to Warrington tomorrow. That's three hours on a Monday. Yeah, that's not good. <laughs> I'll have done a day's work by the end of that. Um, you probably will. What time are we going? I think I'm being picked up at half past six. So. Oh. I, Ten till one I work. I've actually planned this week to go to the library and take my library back, books back and get some new ones simply because, I, I mean, they're not due until the 2nd of October. But I'm thinking I'm not getting stuck with those books that I've already read if we go into lockdown. I want new ones. Yeah, and I don't blame you. It, it just makes sense. I think we've probably all stocked up on things like toilet roll and other bits quietly without going nuts over the last yeah. Oh, I've got a full basket of toilet rolls in all three bed, uh, bathrooms downstairs. Everybody's got their flu jabs. I've got mine booked, booked 1st of October. I'm in on the 30th. I think it's Michelle gets one. Do you get one, Michelle? Do you get a flu jab? A lot of people get them with work, don't they? Mine, mine's from work. They pay for it. It's You know, it makes sense. Okay, so they have to pay for them. But if it saves them a, a few days of staff absence, it's oh, absolutely. worth it to them, isn't it? So. Well, I, and I wouldn't mind paying for mine. I wouldn't object to it. It's only 10 or 12 quid. It's not a massive amount of money. wouldn't bother me to have to pay. Uh, Helen says, I always have a good stash of essentials. Yeah, yeah and that's Helen. the best way to be, because then you just don't get caught out, do you? I think everyone's going to start stocking up on um, soap, hand soap and everything again, aren't they? What what went out last time? Pasta. We need pasta, baked beans. Pasta, <laughs> I'm just trying to think. Baked beans, tin tomatoes, yeah. pasta sauces. Yeah. Uh, milk, bread, yeah. all the flour. Oh yeah, the flour. God. All the baking stuff. Can get fl and eggs, flour and eggs, but you can't really. Um, Oh, Helen, Helen Gibson says she can get a free one. Yeah, get get it booked, Helen. Yeah, definitely get it sorted. Yeah, definitely worth it. So Michelle says, no, work, have not done it this year. Mm. I think uh, book one at your pharmacy. Just get it for your own benefit. Yeah, definitely. Because it's one less thing to worry about this winter, isn't it, really? Well, and... Uh, God forbid the worst would happen to anybody that they got COVID and seasonal flu. That's mm. not going to be a good combination, is it? No. It's just mm. not. And you've got to imagine that in the flu jab this year, there are some things in there you would imagine that they will know will help with COVID. Yeah. So even if it just, you know, lowers the illness a bit. Not as bad. Oh, Helen says, due to sourdough, she's got about 40 kilos of flour. <laughs> right, well, we know where to go when we can't get any then, don't we? Right, that's brilliant. Is, is, there, any, is there any gluten-free? Did you buy all gluten the gluten-free? Because <laughs> I still was. can't get gluten-free here. Oh, I, I can get the dance. No. The problem was, though, that because all the normal flour went, people bought 
were gluten free, even though it was like three times the price. They didn't care, did they? Well, and the thing is, it's probably still sat in their cupboards. They've probably never done anything with it. Yeah. Um, and the flour I bought, I used, um, and I've, I've got one kilo of self raisin in the cupboard. I've got one. About it. I'm not a big one for baking, it has to be said. No, I, I occasionally get the urge to make a cake, or Jake will leave a note saying, please make cake, with a big smiley on it. Uh, and I'll give in and make one, but no, I'm not a baker. I'm not, no. I'd rather make a um, rice pudding, to be honest. <laughs> it's dead easy. I'm more of an eater. I'm more of an eater than a baker. Yeah, yeah but like a rice pudding, you shove rice and milk and a bit of, you know, spice in, shove it in the oven two hours, it's done, you just eat it. It's dead easy. Oh, she didn't get gluten free, she's laughing at us now. <laughs> Uh, but actually considered milling wheat in the coffee grinder before she'd resort to gluten-free. No, and no, I don't blame you because it's awful stuff. It's really, it just doesn't work. So it's it's not the same. Same. I'd rather just not have pastry or cake than no. have gluten-free. I'd rather just do without. I've actually got some Morrison's um, gluten-free jam tarts this week, and they're oh, really God. nice. Are they? Yeah. Morrison's is getting quite good with their gluten-free stuff, you know. Oh, Paul made an apple tart today, but it looks a bit sad. A pint of custard over the top of it, Helen, will make all the difference and nobody yeah. will care. Love custard. And one of the most triumphant desserts I ever made was Total Fluke, where I was making my chocolate cake. This was at Mum's one day. And there was a problem with the oven, and I took it out, and I said, I, I think that needs to go back in, and she looked at it, and she went, no, no, I think it's fine. And we came back in about 10 minutes later in the middle, it sunk. Uh, <laughs> I was broken hearted being youngster. But yeah. mum just went, look in the cupboard, get some tin mandarins, which we got. She said, go into your dad's drinks cabinet, find something like Grand Manier, something with orange. Go and find that. So I came back with that. By which time she'd whipped up a load of cream, put some ice and sugar in it, added the Grand Marnier, mixed in these little mandarin slices and filled the middle of it into a big pile of cream and chopped mandarins, Grand Marnier and sugar, dusted the top with ice and sugar and everyone from then on kept saying, oh, can you make that chocolate thing? You know where it was dipped and then it had all their mandarins. <laughs> And it, I slammed the oven door, <laughs> turned the oven off early, and I've never been able to sink a cake since. <laughs> Have you tried with the gluten-free flour? I'm sure you could probably manage it this time. Possibly. Uh, if I do gluten-free baking, I'm more likely to use almond flour. Right. I would mm. rather use that. I um, don't mind the dove stuff. I think it's all right, actually. It's okay. It's, you know, it's, it's the best approximation. But with a lot of the gluten-free stuff that you get, it's stuffed up with potato tarts. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and the bread like... tastes like potato. It's got kind of a clagginess. Yeah. And... Gluten-free bread can only be eaten toasted. Yeah. And it's never enjoyed. It's eaten. Gluten-free bread is eaten, but you can never enjoy a slice of toast or enjoy I used to love bread and butter, just plain bread and butter. Can't do it. Yeah, well, that's got wheat's got some kind of chemical in it, which is as addictive as cocaine. So let's understand that part of our fascination with wheat is partly addiction. Yeah. Dolphins, because it's designed to make us want it. And also it reminds <laughs> you of your childhood, doesn't it? You know. Yeah. It does, it absolutely so, does. And so, most, most things can be improved with lashings of melted butter. It's just... I mean, Sunday afternoons at Nana's house, bread, butter, jam and a cup of tea. Yeah. Both yeah. doesn't get better. No, yeah, possibly a scrape of peanut butter with the jam. Yeah, but when I was growing up, that, that wasn't the done thing. Yeah, that was a bit exotic, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. I mean, we've never even had pasta. I don't even think I had a pizza till I was about 14. Really? Yeah. I went round my friend's house. It was their birthday. And they'd ordered um, a 
delivery pizza from uh, it was either Pizza Hut or it, I think it must have been Pizza Hut, and it was the supreme one with everything on it, including the olives and stuff. And I looked at it, I was like, "What the hell is this? Never seen it before in my life." It's How funny. funny. Uh, you just remember that. I mean, it, when we had the pub, the fashionable foods were prawn cocktail to start. Love some cocktail. Chicken in a basket with chips. Oh, yeah. And Alabama chocolate fudge cake. <gasps> Mississippi mud pie. <laughs> or Black Forest Gatto. I love Black Forest Gatto. Um, My mum used to get one of the milkman. She used to get off the milkman every Christmas a Black Forest Gatto. And a death by chocolate. I mean, we used to get those, and occasionally peak and pie from the company oh, where we bought the frozen desserts. And my mum always made fresh apple pies for the pub. See, my we we grew up quite, you know, simple stuff. Every meal included potatoes. <laughs> Every single meal had a version of potatoes. Helen says, I, Helen Gibson says, I was a lot older than that and I don't ever remember uh, pizza at home. No, exactly. No, we no, never had pizza. I, d I don't think we had pizza at home until be, I was probably in my 20s. It would be really interesting to know when the first Pizza Hut opened in the UK. Cause... I had pizza at Italian restaurants, but not at home. Well, we never went to restaurants. The first time I went to a restaurant was my sister's 16th birthday. Oh, Helen, now you're talking. My nan made a lovely treacle tart. Oh, mm. treacle tart and custard and 70s food. And custard. With uh, corned beef hash. And oh, no, we, no. The comfort meals. Made a mutton stew yesterday, which I'm having for my tea tonight, and it's in a little casserole in the fridge, and there's a big plate full for Jake for when he gets home. We can microwave that, and it's got a lovely thick gravy and mashed mm. potatoes on with it, and it's, it's, it's infant food, really. There's no chewing required. <laughs> Do you know what? My Callum doesn't like chicken. He always moans. If you make chicken, you oh, chicken, chicken, bone, chicken. And two weeks ago, I did chicken breasts in just gravy, shoved them in the oven with mashed potatoes and veggies. Well, he polished the lot off and then he actually volunteered to eat the leftovers the next day. He's never volunteered to eat chicken leftovers. So simple, yet he enjoyed it. It's lovely, though. It's the comforting thing about the gravy and the mash. Oh, gravy and mash. I'm sorry. It's just tasty. Mm -hmm. Got to be onion gravy though, but not not for you. It was the, it was Bisto gluten free veggie gravy. Is it any good? Yeah, it's nice. I enjoyed it. Mm. And it's probably got onions in it, and it probably did float me out a little bit, but not too bad. It was fine. So is is anybody making sort of um, tons of stuff with their produce from their gardens? <laughs> did you see my carrot? <laughs> your carrot and your peas. And, uh, I've, got, I've got more carrots. tomato. You've got more carrots, have you? I was just pulling one at a time because, you know, there's no point pulling them all up if you're not going to eat them in one go. Well, you know. I'm so sad. <laughs> what? Do you want a carrot? It's a little oh, weak carrot. Can I say hello? Can I say hello? No. No, so it's dinner time. No, I mean, still just laid down there. Well, actually, Mock is trying to stare me out. And Coco's laid down because she's given up pestering. <laughs> no, this one wants his dinner now. It's five o'clock. You know, yeah, time. time to go. Um, we'll see you Thursday for cables. I will look forward to that. Mm. Oh, yeah, one, if it's not too hot, I'll wear my cable vest. Oh. Yeah. Let's see how warm it is on Thursday. I think we're expecting a cold snap, so I, I might be able to. Yeah. Yeah, I think we've got showers on Thursday. The rain starts then. Yeah. Right, well, we'll see you then. Toodles. Bye-bye.